Hey guys, welcome back to our Maranatha Global Bible Study. This is session 33 in the King of Glory, uh, continuing a series of devotional messages, probably for the balance of this year, to point us toward uh, the depth of, I guess, theological richness in the area of the preeminence, the sovereignty, the kingship, the lordship of Jesus, whatever language you want to use. My aim is to do a bunch of shorter devotionals that will just give us a thought to, to dwell on, uh, maybe even a, a thought for the week. If you gather with a small group of people in your home or at your church or whatever, this would be an excellent uh, diving board for conversation around a table. Um, and so all of these are simple facts or factors from the, from the, um, the ministry of Jesus, let's just say, uh, that point us toward his kingship and how it matters for us, how it mattered then and how it matters now. Today, we're going to take a look at resurrection. And um, usually I start with a New Testament passage and then point back to the, um, to the old. I'm going to do that in reverse today. I want to talk uh, or read to you a prophetic passage out of Psalm 16 that I think is powerful. Uh, and then we'll go into 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, the, the the devotional thought today is that essentially the kingship of Jesus was confirmed or vindicated when he rose again, conquering death for us forever. It The, the fact of the matter is, is if there is no resurrection, uh, then there's no reason for us to be reflecting on any of this. And um, it is the resurrection of Jesus that vindicates everything else that, that, that comes. Uh, and so... Let's look first at Psalm, six, Psalm 16, verses 5 to 11. Lord, you have assigned me my portion and my cup. You have made my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will, will you let your Holy One see decay." I think this is a, that, that verse 10 there is a, a passage that is pointing both to uh, the resurrection of Jesus and our deliverance from death as a result. Verse 11, you have made known to me the path of life. You have made known to us through the resurrection of Jesus the way in which we will know life. You will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Literally this uh, you will fill me with joy in your presence as you will fill me with joy with your face. You know, we will see you face to face. There's a day coming as, as a result of what you've done for us through your resurrection that we will be in resurrected bodies, stand face to face, and we will know eternal um, joy that is that we've never even tapped into before. We'll, we will literally be filled with joy with the, the face of Jesus right up in front of our face. Uh, I, I long for that sort of uh, uh, experience. And then, of course, he says there are eternal pleasures at his right hand. And uh, the beauty of eternity is, is just an unfolding revelation that will lead us into deeper and to deeper and to deeper joy as we get to know him more and more. We hope you're enjoying this Maranatha Global Bible Study. wanted to take a quick minute here and ask you to consider something. Our highest priority as an organization is laying foundations where there are none in the 1040 window in accordance with Romans 15, to name the name where it's never been named. Now, if this is something that resonates with you, if you love the Maranatha message, proclaiming it to the ends of the earth at the end of the age, if this is something that resonates with you, I want to ask you to consider becoming a $5 monthly supporter of FAI. This is as crazy as it sounds, one of the most relevant and significant ways that you can support the work of the Great Commission through the FAI Global Family is by giving $5 a month. Because as the collective body of $5 givers a month grows, so too does our ability to increase our workforce on the ground and expand our initiatives and activities and operations in the Middle East in the 1040 window. So click on the link below for more information and consider starting today becoming a $5 monthly supporter of FAI. Thank you guys. Back to the teaching. Let's take a look at the um, at 1 Corinthians 15. You know, if you don't know, you should, um, that this is the longest 
chapter in all of Paul's writings, and it is, in compl- it is completely focused on the resurrection of Jesus. I'm not going to read the whole, the whole passage. I just want to point to the part that I believe helps to make this devotional point that it is his resurrection that confirms or vindicates his supremacy, his preeminence um, by, by conquering death for, for all of us. We're going to look at verses 20 through 28. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. <clears throat> for, since, for since death came through a man, the resurrection of the, of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. For each in his own turn, Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. So first Jesus, then, upon his, then at his return at the right time, all of us who are in him raised to be with him. Then the end will come when the, he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he has put everything under his feet. Now when it says that everything has been put under him, it is clear that it, this does not include God himself who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him who put everything under him so that God may be all in all. I think this is an extraordinary section here that helps to remind us that um, the point of, of resurrection is to bring us into this eternal relationship, but it is really the, the seal in which all of God's work is vindicated or confirmed as being, um, you know, aiming towards something. And of course, not just the, the, the possibility of resurrection that exists because Jesus is the firstborn from the dead, but the day is coming when we will be in our resurrected bodies and that we will see the fulfillment of that Psalm 16 prophetic passage where we will literally have joy with his face. Of course, none of this matters if he's not raised from the dead. Paul says in verse 14 of 1 Corinthians 15, and if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. Thank God, beloved, our preaching is not useless and your faith is not useless, for he is indeed risen. He's risen indeed. See you next week. Maranatha.